Hello everyone, this is Rudy Josa. Um, I'm from Kepo and from the process Health Rights Action. And I work in community work, um, accompanying uh, strategic processes, um, strengthening of uh, social organizations. And this is a video to introduce you to the power of mapping and power mapping. Mapping, as any visual tool we work collectively, allows us to better understand the complex issues we are working on. On the one hand, every person shares their knowledge and all views are collected in a common image. On the other hand, when we have the result, we manage to put a complex reality in front of us and it allows us to understand, to analyze it and to make strategies. There are several kinds of maps that can be useful for our purpose of strategizing. A simple kind of map would organize the actors with whom we have an interest in three different circles, from the closest relation to the furthest. For example, the core team would be at the center. People organizations with whom we cooperate closely would be right after, and other partners with whom we collaborate sometimes, then they would be a bit more further. Finally, actors that we don't know but that we would like to reach at some point, they would be the ones which are the farthest in the map. So once we have them organized, we can think of different aspects like, are there common needs or potentials among several of these actors we have in the map? With whom of those do we have common goals? Which actors that are close to us could bring us closer to actors with which we don't have contact yet? And what should be the goals in the relation with some actors? And which actions do we do to achieve these goals of relationship with them? As you see through these questions, a map of actors allows us to think collectively and strategically. First, to diagnose our environment and then to plan our action. A kind of map that is really useful when we are willing to perform some advocacy actions is what people call a power map or a map of powers. Its objective is to create a clear picture of who is who in the game that we are willing to play. See who can be allies, who may oppose us, who we have to target, and what is the power balance between the different players in the map. Again, there may be many ways to make a power map, but we will use the one you see on screen as an example. When we want to generate social transformation, we need to address actors around us that are key in order to make it possible. On the one hand, institutions, which may be our target for changing rules or laws or policies. We definitely want to influence them in order to create long-term and significant changes. Civil society organizations, among which many of them are potentially our allies. Usually, our alliances need to be strengthened and developed. With non-organized people or communities, we may be willing to raise awareness and involve them if possible, otherwise at least having them on our side. We also need to acknowledge that there will be groups who will oppose to what we are proposing. In the case of privatization of healthcare, indeed, private health companies, hospitals, and so on, will push in the opposite direction to maintain or increase opportunities for a private business within healthcare. With these actors, we will not have the chance to make agreements, so we will need to oppose, confront, delegitimize their narrative and their action. Finally, there is a group of players who are capital in the creation of public opinion and knowledge. On the one hand, the experts, institutes, think tanks, specialized councils, and on the other hand, we have the media. These two groups are crucial because they push to generate a state of opinion, a culture of what is good and what is bad, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And we need to generate alliances, build narratives with actors in this sector in order to push for cultural changes and awareness raising regarding our topics of interest. As we see, the simple fact of having groups of actors in a conceptual map allows us to understand better, to analyze our needs and 
to see possible action. We are going to analyze now in depth how we can work with each of these groups and the different purposes we may have with each of them. First, the institutions. When willing to achieve a change of policies, legal changes or government support, institutions are our final target. Legal changes are worked in the parliament and therefore we may want to access and influence the parliament through addressing specific parties with representatives there by participating in special commissions or even presenting some legislative initiative through a participatory process. As an example of such a legislative initiative, we could think of a law to guarantee universal access to healthcare or a law that guarantees transparency in public-private partnerships. When, on the other hand, we are willing to achieve a change of policies or government action, we may have to address governmental institutions at the local or at the national level. Advocacy may happen at the highest levels with the ministry and the government itself, but also at the lower level, tackling specific policies, technical regulations or procedures developed by some area or department. Policy can happen with politicians, but also with technicians in an institution. In order to influence institutions on policies, it is crucial to influence what we call the balance of powers. Which portion of the social power has each player or group of players in our map? We need to increase the relative power on our side and diminish the influence that other players and oppose our goals have. On the side of increasing our relative power, let's look at some group of stakeholders. First of all, civil society organizations and organized social movements often represent causes which are close to ours. The power of action, the capacity of mobilization, the access to resources on our side, when we are willing to push for social change, needs to come from the building of alliances among these progressive forces. The building of trust, of personal relationships among activists of different organizations and, of course, the identification of common goals and mutual solidarity, meaning that you can count on me and I can count on you, are key factors that help strengthening cooperation among movements and organizations. Of course, collective power is founded in the support of people, communities to our cause. As our colleagues from MEDAC put it, so having the capacity to mobilize the many in solidarity will allow to question and break the power of the few. In order though to mobilize the many, we need to start with specific groups. Building community step by step, building movement with those directly affected by the policies, with those in communities which may be more in tune with us, either neighborhoods, professional fields, age, orientations, and so on. We need to be as specific as possible and identify groups who dissolve the idea of a general public and start drawing the possibility of supporting communities. Then we may start our work to build bonds with them through community processes, empowerment and grassroots action. And then, if we are willing to achieve a wider support a social reaction and a cultural change, we also need to work to mainstream our narratives. In order to do that, we need to work in our relationships with another group of key stakeholders. Those who are considered experts, universities, institutes, professional councils, and those who create public opinion every day, the media. For the first group, the considered experts, we are aware that professional colleges are not usually run by the most progressive views and that think tanks or professors with public visibility tend to align with neoliberal views. As these experts give form to the speech of what is good and what not, a movement seeking for cultural change and social change needs to find and engage with allies in this expert sector that can defend our narrative, research institutes, professors and so on. At the international level, we find recognized voices on our side in institutions like the Transnational Institute, EURDAT, EPSU as a Federation of Public Services Union, or globally recognized NGOs like Oxfam, Amnesty International, or the People's Health Movement itself. On the other hand, 
media and especially mass media have a big influence in shaping social opinion. Unfortunately, their shareholders usually are on the opposite side to ours. Our entrance to mass media will come, therefore, either through such huge massive mobilizations or social scandals that can be neglected or through respected experts on our side who have the capacity to be asked to publish their views in media with great outreach. Of course, in terms of communication and pointing at building our close community stronger, independent and progressive media are key to engage social groups who may be closer to us. In order to have a space in this kind of media, it is very important for us to grow a relationship with journalists in a way that sharing information becomes mutually beneficial. In terms of media, we know that well-articulated campaigns at social media platforms can give us visibility. And for that, being generous to our community, giving visibility to their action and supporting their campaigns is a way to generate a closer relationship with the actors in our community. While marketing works in a logic of community management, we defend that our logic needs to be that of a community gardening, taking care of the community. Now let's consider our opposers. There are social groups that are very interested to keep the status quo as it is, and even pushing it forwards. In the health field, private companies owning hospitals, other companies providing public services to public healthcare, insurance companies, and so on, and also those other companies who are making revenues out of other public services, who will defend privatization as a matter of freedom, of efficiency, or of public uh, and economic strength. These players in our map will oppose to our action, will use their contacts in public institutions and political parties, and will influence the experts to publish on their defense. And they will also do communication campaigns to sell their cause very well and with great quality and outreach. Now, if we talk about balance of powers, for sure, our opposers are at a stronger point than us now, and this is the reason why policies benefit them at the moment. But we have options to readjust that balance. First, by making our movements stronger, by increasing our capacity to mobilize and our explicit social support gaining visibility in the media, improving our narrative and telling our story better. That could make us stronger. Second, by delegitimizing their narrative, we can prove that privatization of public services is worse for communities and we should make it known. And third, by making them weaker. Yes, we have powerful opponents, but we may obtain little victories that make them weaker and can allow everyone to see that change is possible. So now we can see that for each type of actors, we have understood generic goals which may work well in all of the cases. With public institutions, our generic goal would be to influence them, to change policies, to change laws. With civil society organizations, our goals would be around growing our network stronger and having our activists empowered. With non-organized people and communities, our goal would be to bring them closer to the movement and generate cultural change. With the experts and media, our goal would be to identify and feed ally voices among these actors and introduce powerful narratives. And with our opposers, our goal would be for sure to weaken them, to delegitimize them, to achieve victories and to readjust the balance. So our task with the actors in this map will be to define more precisely what all this means in our case. For each group, we can define who are the specific players we want to target in each group. What do we want to achieve with them or from them in the short, medium and long term? And how do we plan to do it? As you see, this can be the backbone that orientates the whole advocacy strategy towards the social transformation we are aiming for.